Hi, James Whiffen here for AE Tuts, and today we're talking about threading and how we can render faster in After Effects. So firstly, what are threads? Modern day processes often contain multiple cores. Using a process called hyperthreading, each one of these cores can further be divided into threads. Take my computer for example. I have two CPUs, and each one has eight physical cores. With hyperthreading enabled, each core is divided into two threads, giving me a total of 32 threads. In Windows Task Manager, I can change my graph view to logical processes, and I can see what each one of my 32 threads is doing. So we can see that this thread is working the hardest, and this one's working a little bit, and the rest are pretty much idle. Well, the great thing is that each one of these threads can be working on its own calculation individually. In the software world, code can be created to work on just one thread or with many threads. Software that works on only one thread is called single-threaded, and software that works over multiple threads is called multi-threaded. After Effects is multi-threaded. However, many effects in our effects and presets panel are only single-threaded. Let's take a look at an example inside of After Effects. Here I have a very large composition. Uh, it's about 56 megapixels. And uh, I've got a fractal noise effect here on a solid, filling the entire frame, rendering at full resolution. Now, fractal noise is a multi-threaded effect. So that means that when we render it, or when we're just uh, trying to find, preview a new frame, uh, all 32 threads, or however many threads you have in your computer, will work together to generate the effect. So I'll hit uh, zero on the numpad to start a RAM preview. And if I swap to Task Manager, I can see that all threads are working in unison to uh, render the frame. And the reason we see these little peaks here is that After Effects is just calculating the frame, storing it in RAM, calculating the next frame, storing it in RAM, and so on. But we can see that all threads are working together. Now let's take a look at another effect. We're gonna type in radial blur here. And I'm just gonna add in the default After Effects radial blur. I'm just gonna hit uh, caps lock and purge all my RAM. And for this radial blur, I'm going to change it to zoom and make it very large, 1000, and I'm going to set the quality to high. Now let's RAM preview this effect with the fractal noise and the radial blur. And let's see what happens. Let's go to the task manager. And we can see that CPU usage, although we are currently doing a RAM preview, is sitting at about 8%. It's very low. So why is that? Well, the problem is that only one single thread is working hard on this. And we can see it here. It's this thread here. It's maxing out. Uh, this thread is working at 100% capacity. But all the other threads are pretty much not working at all. We can see this thread is doing a little bit. But this thread is the only one that's really working on that frame. And now, the funny thing is that radial blur is actually a multi-threaded effect. So why is only one thread working on it? And the reason for that is, is because we're currently working in 32 bits per channel. So I'm just gonna hit caps lock to stop refreshing the frame. And I'm gonna change our mode to eight bits per channel. I'm gonna purge the RAM and take off caps lock and RAM preview again. And now let's look at the difference. Now we can see that the CPU usage is at 100%. So what's the deal? Well, the fact is that some effects such as radial blur are single threaded when working in 32 bits per channel, but multi-threaded when working at eight bits per channel. So because we're now working at eight bits per channel, all 32 threads are working 100% to calculate the frame. There are of course effects that are single threaded at both eight and 32 bits per channel. And one of these is the Radium Glow. So I have Radium Glow here. I'll just increase the uh, radius to something ridiculous and take off Caps Lock. And now if we go to Task Manager, we will see that we have only one thread working on this effect. Even though we're only working eight bits per channel, the Radium Glow is single threaded for both eight and 32 bits per channel. Therefore, we can only have one thread working on it at a time. So how can we be more efficient when working with single threaded effects? After Effects has a solution to this problem and it's called multiprocessing. Multiprocessing is simply After Effects calculating multiple frames in a sequence at the same time. 
Because this uh, radium glow is only being calculated on a single thread, theoretically I could render 32 frames of this radium glow uh, in a sequence using multiprocessing in the same time it would take me to render a single frame. The problem is that whilst the theory of multiprocessing is sound, the execution inside of After Effects is rather poor. Here I have a real life example of a project. It has lots of different effects. We're working 32 bits per channel, so we have a mixture of um, single and multi-threaded effects. Lots of things going on, lots of motion blur and depth of field. And I need this rendered as soon as possible, so I'm going to turn on multi-processing to try and take advantage of all my 32 threads. Okay, so we've got multi-processing turned on. I'm allocating zero CPUs for other ap applications, and I've given it one gigabyte per core. Let's just increase that to two gigs per core. And let's hit OK. So let's add this to the render queue. So I'm rendering a TIFF sequence, and we've already set up our render settings, so let's hit render. And After Effects will go ahead and initialize the background processes, so it'll start up a copy of After Effects for each core that it's going to use. And this can take quite a long time, which is another one of the downsides of using After Effects default multiprocessing. Let's have a look at the task manager. We can see that it's started up lots and lots of versions of After Effects. Let's have a look at the CPU usage. It's thinking quite heavily to try and start up these processes. It finally started. It's uh, rendered one frame, estimated one hour remaining. So it's um, initialized all the background processes, and we can see that, yes, um, all the threads are working together, but it just seems like a monumental waste of all this uh, computing power that After Effects is failing to utilize. It's failing to take advantage of all these threads. So unfortunately, in real-world situations, the default multiprocessing inside of After Effects just doesn't cut it. It's not very efficient. It takes a while to get started. And yeah, it's just a waste. So I'm going to let this uh, finish rendering and we'll note down the time it takes to render the entire sequence and then we'll compare it to another method for multiprocessing inside of After Effects. All right, the render has finished. Let's see in After Effects how long that took. It was 26 minutes and six seconds using multi-processing. And um, for most of that time, the CPU was not being used much at all. After Effects made us wait 26 minutes while the CPU wasn't even being used 100% or even 70%. So let's take a look at an alternative method for more efficient multi-processing inside of After Effects. And uh, what you'll need is the background renderer script. Uh, I'm sure pretty much all of you will have that script because it's literally the best script. It is such a lifesaver and it's the best $35 you'll ever spend. So we need to use that. So I'm just going to bring that up under Window, Background Renderer. And I'll just slot that in next to the render queue. And what we want to do is come to this composition and firstly turn off the memory and multiprocessing because we're not we don't want to use After Effects multiprocessing because as we've seen that's very ineffective and also when you're doing um, render test benchmarks you always want to clear your cache just so that uh, the results don't get skewed and also purge the RAM control alt slash there we go all the RAM is purged and uh, what we want to do is add this to the render queue and what we're going to do is choose a multi-machine settings for both the render settings and the output. But don't worry, we're not going to be doing multi-machine rendering here. And once we've set the file destination, all we do is come over to background render and hit render. The project needs to be saved, just hit yes. And once it saves the project, it will begin background rendering. So here we can see the background render. And what we want to do is just repeat the process for as many background renders as you want. And this is going to uh, more effectively multi-process the scene. So don't worry about any errors, we can just keep adding these up. So here are all the background renders that we have going. And you'll see that lots of the frames are taking zero seconds. That's just each of the background renderers skipping the frames that the other ones are working on. And that's because we set the output modules to multi-machine settings. 
so they won't uh, be wasting time rendering the same frames. And let's take a look at the task manager. And we should be able to see that there's a lot more uh, of the CPU being used. Now it's not 100%. And uh, if you want to render faster, just keep adding more of these background renderers. And the more that you add, the more of the CPU will be used. But even with just six of these background renders, we can see that a lot more of the CPU is being used. But just say um, I'm on a tight deadline. This literally needs to be rendered as soon as possible. I'm just going to go ahead and add lots of these. So now we can see much more of the CPU is being used. And this is going to help us get this render out uh, as quickly as possible. Now often uh, when we're working on projects, um, we like to continue working inside of After Effects while uh, still rendering our compositions in the background. So if I needed to keep working inside of After Effects while rendering this, I obviously wouldn't have launched so many background renders. I would launch enough so that the uh, CPU is at about 80%. Uh, so 80% of the CPU is being taken up by the background renders, and that would leave 20% CPU for me to still work inside of After Effects. So how many background renders you launch is completely dependent on your situation. Okay, so our, our background render has finished. Here's the, uh, the folder. So test one was the original render that we did using multiprocessing uh, inside of After Effects. And that took, uh, if we remember, 26 minutes. Let's have a look at test two. The first image was started at 936 and it was completely rendered by 941 was the very last frame. So it only took five minutes as opposed to 26 minutes. So if you want to uh, get that render out as soon as possible or just more efficiently render in the background, ditch the default After Effects multiprocessing and start running background renderer. It's a lot more efficient and you'll get your renders out that much faster.